Hey guys, welcome back. Will Robinson here from Robinson's Auto, toolsandtime.com. Got another GMC here, GM product. This one here has a laundry list, as you can tell. It's pretty late in the day, so I'm going to try to pick out something simple. I you will probably see a few videos on this one, because we'll be in here for a couple days. The uh, truck is making a clunking noise in the front. Got time to check it out. How about some more electrical troubleshooting? And uh, let's go along with the electrical series I was putting together a while back. So let's see if we can put some of that knowledge to use. And um, inoperative daytime running lights. Let's see what we can find. Let's start by looking at the schematic. Here I got the headlight circuit schematic up. Let me zoom that in a couple times. I'll try to go over this without messing it up too bad on you. So what I want to focus on first is the daytime running light module. It's located behind the left side of the dash. The location ain't too important right now. I just want to see what it's looking for in order to operate. And up here we're going to look at the module as this is going to be the input. All the inputs of what it's looking for in order for it to get the OK signal to to operate correctly. The first thing you see here is the park brake signal. If you if you follow that conductor up, you see it goes to a park and brake switch. This is located on your, your emergency brake. As you can see, it's normally open. If you push down on your emergency brake, the switch in contact will close and it'll send a ground signal which will deactivate the module. Okay, so that's one thing we can look for to make sure we got this good input. The next one is your indicator bulb check. So you follow that up, it goes to your ignition switch. So if that goes around and gets, as you can see, that goes to ground. If that gets grounded out, looks like it'll be only when it's cranking, it'll also deactivate the daytime running light. Okay. Next thing in line, you can see ignition. So I'm assuming that's the control voltage. And as you go, as you can see here, it goes up to the fuse four gauges, 10 amp. That's hot and run, bulb test or start. Okay, let's go back down to the module. The next thing you can see is the lamp feed. If we follow that up, you can see that goes to the head headlight switch. So what that would do is if this fuse is okay, this switch in contact will close over to the headlight conductor, which would go down and put that input into the lamp feed which would deactivate the daytime running lights as well because if your headlights are on if your headlight switch is on then there's really no need for this module to be be working okay so that's your input so if you come down here you got your outputs okay so now that I got a pretty good idea of the inputs I'm going to come down and take a look at the outputs as you can see the brake indicator control and the brake warning in this goes to your instrument cluster and it's pretty much your indicator lights. We're going to ignore them for now. My main focus is going to be on this daytime running light relay control. And this module also shares ground down here. But let's take a look at these outputs. As you can see there's two conductors leaving. So if we scroll up you can see that first conductor goes to your daytime running light indicator light in your instrument cluster and it's controlling the ground side of that bulb which is fed from fuse 4, that gauge fuse, the 10 amp fuse that's hot and run, bulb test and start. So pretty much whenever the ignition is on. And that other conductor comes over to the daytime running light relay. 
Okay, and that's controlling the ground side of this relay as well. And if you go up, if you follow the conductor up through the relay, it's going to your coil, your electromagnet, which is being powered from that fuse 4 as well. So that's pretty much hot whenever ignition is on. So when the relay, when the control modular, when your daytime running light control modular supplies the ground, this contact will close which is powered by fuse 15 that fuse is hot at all times that's being supplied by your light and fuse 8 that's under the hood as you can see, follow it over. So fuse 15 will be hot at all times. Okay. So now what do we look at? Okay, so what I would do next, I would take in, I'm only looking at the daytime run light control side of this circuit. I'm not going to pay any attention right now to this normally closed side of this contact. That's for your low beam circuit. If we have time, we'll go over that later. However, I'm looking to see if that modular, if everything's working good, we're getting our output. This relay closes, completes this contact, it goes down to this switching contact, to this TAN H4 wire. I'm going to unhighlight the control side. So if we follow that down, as you can see, that goes right to our low beams, your headlights. Okay, so let's for, let's perform some tests. What should I do first? I think a real good starting point is check fuse four, make sure that's hot, and run with the key on, and I'll also check fuse fifteen and make sure our fuses are good. Okay, I think the best place to start in a case like this is checking the fuses. Don't mind this video, this is real time troubleshooting. I haven't looked at this one yet, so there's no staging going on here. I'm, I'm going to do my best for you guys, step by step on how I troubleshoot. So uh, we know by looking at the schematic that fuse 4, the 10 amp gauges fuse, that is your control voltage that goes to the relay. Okay, and the relay is switched by ground from the daytime running late modular. So let's check the number four fuse and also fuse 15, your uh, 20 amp daytime running late slash fog light fuse. So four and 15 with the key on. Okay, so let's turn the key on. I'll be using a basic test light. So let's check fuse four. We got the test light hooked to ground and I'm probing for power. That side of the fuse is good, that side is good, so it's a continuous flow from one side of the fuse to the other, so that's telling me that fuse is good. This is a simple way of checking fuses using a test light. Okay, now we're going to want to check fuse 15. Okay, I got juice on that side, got power on that side, so that fuse is good. So now, let's take one more look at that schematic and see where to go. Okay, so now we know those fuses are good, my next place to go would be to this daytime running light relay because I can perform 90% of my test right at this relay. What I would do, I would remove the relay with the key on, of course, because we know fuse 4 is good with the key on, and I'll make sure that we're actually receiving power from the fuse 4. So that would tell me if every, all the conductor and terminals and junctions are good down to the relay. So with a test light I would check to make sure power is present. Okay from there if you come down under the left side of the dash you can see your relay center right there. To give you guys a better shot I'm going to take out this flasher. This is your turn signal flasher. I can see it's in the way a little bit. Okay 
I just removed the flasher to give you guys a better shot at the daytime running light pins when we removed the relay. So let's remove the relay. If you remember in previous videos, I showed you how they have schematics on most relays. Okay? So you see that 85 and 86 is your control side of the relay. That's your electromagnetic coil that will pull the contact into 87 and complete the circuit from 87 to 30 or whichever and uh, turn on your daytime running lights. Okay. So what I would do now is see if I have power. I can't recall if it's 85 or 86, but I'll check both of them terminals. One's going to be my power and one's going to be my ground. And remember, it's, it's a ground switching circuit, so it's, it's hot with the key on. So I'm going to probe for hot. It's either going to be 85 or 86. So if I take and I turn the relay over, I don't know if you can see it, but this is 85 and this one's 86. So if I take and I look at it like this, Okay, so this bottom one will be 86, top one will be 85. Correct. Okay, so one of them should be hot. Okay, as you remember, the key has to be in the run position. So, I'm going to turn the key on. Alright, I don't think you want to be hearing that buzzing. I'm going to take and unhook this modular. Just for the testing purposes. Looking at the relay once again, 86 is the terminal down here, and 85. And as you can see, I just touched that and lit up, so I know I have control voltage. However, these are your control side of the relay. So as you can see, I have nothing on 86, but I do have power on 85. So that's telling me that the fuse, that would be the number four fuse, let me take and pull out number four fuse and uh, tell me if that goes out. Okay, you ready? See how that just went out? Now if we had a blown fuse on number four, you would uh, you want to have power. So I just reinstalled the fuse. As you can see, the power returned. So you can actually check your control circuit here instead of checking the fuses. However, I just want to show you both ways of doing it. So we know we have our our power side of the control which comes on with the key how do we check to see if we have our ground side of the circuit my most critical test would be on this light green with black tracer conductor and that's our output from our daytime running light control module so if I'm receiving this ground signal that's going to eliminate so much in this troubleshooting because as long as I'm receiving that ground signal that's telling me everything in this whole control modular circuit is performing the way it should. So that'll tell me that the emergency brake is released, it's not in a start position, the headlight switch isn't on, and we have our control voltage to the modular, our ground is good, everything is good in this, all our conditions are made and everything's good in that control modular if I'm receiving this ground signal. So I would want to go for my most critical step and check to see if I'm receiving this ground signal with the key on. So now what I want to do is check the opposite side of the control which is a ground switching side of the circuit. So how do I check for a good ground? Well if you remember back in my previous videos when I showed how to use a basic test light you would simply probe and find a good known hot source which I know that this one here is a known good power source and I'd simply reverse my test light. So I take what I do is back probe that hot wire and then reverse my alligator clip like so. So now when I find a good ground my test light will illuminate. So let's check the ground side of the circuit. So like I said if I have a good ground here which I'm hoping for my whole circuit in its entirety is good to this point. Okay, and we do have a good ground. So what's that telling us? Hopefully you guys can see this all right. So what we just determined is our control side of this relay is good. So 85 is hot, coming from fuse 4. 
and 86 is our ground switching circuit which is working correctly so that should be energizing this electromagnet switching the contacts from 87A over to 87 completing the circuit from 87 down to 30 which we know goes to the headlights so looking at the schematic we know 87 goes up to fuse 15 we know we have a good fuse 15 but let's just double check and make sure we have power on terminal 87 okay if we flip this over we can see 87 I'm not sure if you guys can see it but it's this terminal right here so if I take and I match that up it's going to be this far left upper terminal okay I got my test light hooked back up to ground so I'm just going to check here to make sure I have just testing my equipment alright so let's check uh, 87 wow what do you see wrong there guys look how dim that bulb is do you remember earlier when we checked up at fuse 15 how bright that was that's a good power source right there for some reason we have a power drop here let me get my multimeter and see what it shows now let me demonstrate this with using DVOM I gotta set the T DC volts as you can see got my ground clamp to a ground there's a known good power source 12.28 roughly now let's go down to terminal 87 and see what we got 12.08 you see a noticeable voltage drop but not huge and that could be very deceiving I would almost that can almost lead you in the wrong direction and that's why I like using a test light because it actually puts a load on a circuit where my DVOM isn't really putting too much of a load on it so we're not seeing a huge voltage drop so let's put a load on this circuit and actually see what kind of drop we're having Okay, for this next test, what I'm going to do is put the actual load of the circuit on pin 87. So when this relay actuates, 87 and 30 will complete. So if we flip this over, we see 87 and 30. Okay, so that will be the upper right and lower left. There's a few different ways of doing this. I'm just going to show you one technique using a jumper wire and uh, I have a few different sizes I made up through the years this one just happens to be the right size terminal you don't want to go pushing the wrong size in there because then you'll mess up that female connection okay so upper right lower left okay so with the jumper installed let's see what kind of voltage drop we got here's a known good 12.4 pin 87 as you see I pretty much have nothing 12.4 pin 87 nothing take an on stall from 30 as you see I go up to 12.25 plug 30 back in and it just drops the reason you're seeing such a drop is because this circuit has more load than what my test light had on it but the test light was a a sure fire it showed me that we had a problem where without putting a load on a circuit that could be very deceiving okay so let's see what stands between 87 and fuse 15 okay so we come back up here to fuse 15 we know we have a good power supply because it illuminated our test light nice and bright so if we follow down that conductor as you can see it's got to pass through this diode 203 before it goes to the relay so most likely I believe we just found our issue I think we have a bad diode so let's try to find that diode setup after looking at the location I know it's under the left side of the dash 